Okay, you know, I just noticed that when I press record, it wobbles a little bit, so you're probably getting seasick <laughs> uh, watching the first part of this video, these videos. Anyway, um, but here we go. 7.3, this is a pretty short section. Uh, so uh, we took our little detour into chapter 4. So, so remember, the last time we actually met face-to-face, Okay, we talked about 7.2, 7.1, 7.2, which were about the normal distribution. Um, and now we've gone to these video lectures and we took a little detour and went back and looked at 4.1, 4.2, which were about linear regression. The reason that we wanted to do that is because um, we wanted to be able, we want to be able to assess whether or not something is normally distributed. Because if it is normally distributed, then we can use the normal calculator in StatCrunch to compute probabilities involving that variable. Well, how do you determine if a variable is normally distributed? Well, one of the ways that we've talked about doing this in the past is you could make a histogram out of the data and then just kind of eyeball it and see if the histogram looks normally distributed, looks bell-shaped, right? Um, a more mathematically rigorous way to do it is to come up with some sort of statistic that we can look at uh, to, to sort of measure the normality of a given set of data. And it turns out that the way we go about doing this is very similar to the way that we determine linear correlation, right? Which is why we, we just, uh, we went back to chapter four to talk about linear correlation first. Okay, so we've talked about linear correlation now. Uh, let's talk about assessing normality. So to see why these concepts are related, you might recall that uh, the z-score of an observation is given by this formula, right? Z is x minus mu over sigma. So the relationship between x and z is a linear relationship, okay? Um, we know this because we're not squaring the x or taking the square root of anything or anything like, anything like that. If you were to graph this, if you were to replace z with y and say y equals x minus mu over sigma, and then graph it, you would get a straight line, right? So this is a linear relationship. Uh, to determine if a variable is normally distributed, we can compare the observed values, right? So the actual values that we observe with the z-scores that we would expect to get if the variable is normally distributed, okay? So, and then if there's a linear relationship, if there's a linear correlation between what we expect to get, assuming normality, and what we actually observe, then we say that the data is linearly, or sorry, then we say that the data is normally distributed, right? The type of scatter plot that compares observed values versus expected z-scores is called a normal probability plot. And in StatCrunch, for some reason, that's called a QQ plot. <laughs> so, and I don't know why QQ. I don't know what QQ is supposed to stand for, but, but that's how you get a normal probability plot in StatCrunch. You go to graph and then QQ plot. Um, if we want to get the actual statistic, right, the, the correlation statistic, um, then we need to click on the correlation statistic button, and I'll show you this in StatCrunch in a second. Um, once we've done that, then uh, we're going to compare our correlation statistic to a critical value, just like we did in Chapter 4. The chart that we use is different, though. So this chart of critical values, the numbers on it are different than the chart that we were using in Chapter 4. Okay, so make sure that you're using the appropriate chart. Again, you can just refer back to this chart in your notes, or uh, you could look it up in your textbook. It's also a, a, in one of the appendices in your textbook, in the back of the book. Okay. Um, so this is a very similar process to determining linear correlation. Uh, let's just take you through uh, a couple examples to show you how this works. So this one says, the data below represent the time in seconds for six randomly selected races of a greyhound named Barbie's Bomber. I've never been to a dog race, but I think it would be fun. I think greyhounds are really cool. They're kind of spidery, but, <laughs> but really cool dogs. Anyway, really fast. Uh, anyway, Barbie's Bomber. <laughs> That's a fun name. Uh, so these are the, the, so these are six 
randomly selected races, and these were her finishing times. I'm assuming it's a female, but I, I don't know, I guess. Anyway, these were her finishing times in six randomly selected races. Now, we want to answer the question, is the variable finishing time normally distributed? So to answer that question, we're going to enter the data into StatCrunch, then we're going to go to Graph QQ Plot and get the correlation statistic. We'll compare that correlation statistic to the critical value from this chart. Okay, so, uh, so let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to enter the finishing times here. Thirty-one point three five, thirty-two point six, thirty-one point nine one, thirty-two point five two, thirty-one point two six, thirty-two point three seven. Okay, check, double check to make sure I got them in there right. Uh, I think that looks good. Okay, now uh, to get the correlation statistic here we're going to go to stat or sorry we're going to go to graph qq plot tell stat crunch which uh, of these columns we want to uh, get the correlation statistic for and then click on this little box that says add correlation statistic okay so you click on that box you hit compute and um, and there we go right so it gives us this scatter plot Again, this is a scatter plot that compares what we actually observed to what we would have expected to happen if the variable were normally distributed. And what we're looking for is we're looking to make sure that the, the data points are all relatively close to the line, okay? And we're looking for a, a strong correlation. So again, something pretty close to one here, right? One would mean a strong correlation. And uh, 0.974 is pretty close. So, uh, so I would say that there, there's a strong correlation here, most likely. So, so I, I would say this thing is normally distributed for sure. Okay. Uh, let me just show you real quick. If you forget to check this box, it'll still give you the scatter plot, but notice that it doesn't give you the correlation statistic up here. Okay. So if you want to get this, that number, uh, then you need to make sure you add the correlation statistic there. Okay, and then and then you get the number. Uh, okay, so let's write that down. <clears throat> okay. Um, so we went to graph, what, sorry, we went to graph, then we went to QQ plot, QQ plot, and then we got our, uh, our correlation statistic, which was 0 0.974. Now here our sample size is six, right? We have six finishing times, so n equals six. For n equals six, for a sample size of six, the corresponding critical value is 0 0.888, okay? So that's the number that we have to beat. That's the number that our correlation statistic needs to be bigger than in order for us to determine that this variable is normally distributed, right? Okay, so for n equals 6, critical value, critical value is 0 0.888, and then we'd say since 0 0.974 is greater than 0 0.888, uh, finishing time, is normally distributed. Okay, and that's that. Okay, so that's how you determine if something is normally distributed.
Um, part B asks kind of an interesting question now, kind of tying together this information with what we were doing in chapter seven, right? Computing probabilities involving normally distributed variables. All right, so this one says, if Barbie's bomber runs the race again, what is the probability that she would finish in less than 31 seconds? So we want the probability she finishes in less than 31 seconds. Um, right? So we want to know what's the probability that her finishing time x is less than 31. To figure that out, we're get, since, right, since her finishing time is normally distributed, we're going to use the normal calculator in StatCrunch to figure out this probability, right? So we're going to go to stat, calculators, calculators, normal. When we go there, we're going to be prompted to enter something for the mean and something for the standard deviation. Now, we don't know the population mean and standard deviation of uh, of finishing time for Barbie's bomber. So the best we can do is use the sample mean and the sample standard deviation from the sample information we were given. <clears throat> and in order to get those values, uh, we can compute those in stat crunch by going to stat, summary stats, right, columns, and then uh, finding the mean and standard deviation. So I'm going to go back to stat crunch and find the mean and standard deviation of the Barbie's bomber finishing time data. Okay, here we go. So stat, summary stats, columns. I want the mean and I want the standard deviation. So the mean I'll say is about 31.9. Oh, wait, those were rounded to two decimal places, so maybe I should go 31.91. And the standard deviation, I'll say, is about 0 0.52. Okay, um, I don't want to switch back and forth, it just takes too long. But I've written down the mean is 31.91, the standard deviation is 0 0.52, and I'll show you in a second. Uh, but now let's go and actually find uh, find our probability now. So we can go to stat, calculators, normal. And remember that's when this little bell-shaped thing comes up. Uh, we're going to put in the mean and the standard deviation. So you can you could even just copy and paste these, right? You could highlight, say copy, and paste. Uh-oh. Oh, there we go. Yeah, the whole number's in there. Same thing for the standard deviation. We're going to copy and paste. Okay. And then uh, we're looking for the probability that x is less than 31. Remember, for the normal calculator, you don't have an option for strictly less than. So you just say less than or equal to 31 and hit compute. And uh, there's that probability. Notice that the probability is pretty small, right? Uh, in fact, it's less than a 5% chance of happening, which in the past we've called that an unusual observation. So it would be unusual for Bob, Barbie's bomber to finish her race in less than 31 seconds. And that makes sense, given the fact that none of the finishing times uh, in the data that we have are less than 31 seconds. So it would be pretty unusual, right? It would be pretty unusual for her to finish in less than 31 seconds. Um, okay, but so here's what I've written down so far, right? We want to go to stat calculators normal. We want to enter these values for the mean and standard deviation. And by the way, we got these things by going to stat, summary stats, and then columns. Right, and then we select a mean and standard deviation to get those. Uh, but so now we can answer the question, right? So we can say probability that she finishes in less than 31 seconds is approximately 0 0.0392. Okay, 
Okay, and that's our answer. Okay, so, um, so we can determine if something is normally distributed. If it is normally distributed, then we can use the normal calculator in StatCrunch to compute probabilities regarding that variable. Right? So, this is a, so this is a handy thing to be able to do. Let me just give you one more example. There's not a, not a ton of information in this section to cover. So just one more example and then, uh, and then that'll finish it up for 7.3. This one says the following data represent the speed limits in miles per hour on 12 randomly selected roads in Montana. Determine if speed limits are normally distributed. Okay, so we'll go back to StatCrunch and figure out if this thing is normally distributed. Let's do it. So speed limits. Wait a second, why do I have 13 of these things? Oh, <laughs> I put one too many 80s in there. Let me make sure I got these in right. So 325s, 230s, 235s, 275s, and 380s. Okay, okay, that should do it. All right, so we're going to see if speed limits are normally distributed. Let's see. So we're going to go to graph, QQ plot, and then uh, see if speed limits are normally distributed, so we're just going to click on speed limits and then add the correlation statistic. Okay, so here we go. Um, just looking at this, this looks kind of crazy, right? Like you have a bunch of speed limits down here, and then you have a bunch more up here. I think that makes some sense because uh, because here, you know, the 25, 30, 35, those are probably roads inside of the city. And then these are probably like highways, right? 75, 80 miles per hour, those are probably on the highway. So it makes sense that there's this big gap between the, the different values. Anyway, uh, the correlation statistic is 0.89. Let's see if that's good enough to say that uh, speed limits are normally distributed. So I'm going back to my paper now my notes. Okay, we went to graph, QQ plot, and we got R equals 0 0.89. Let's see, now we have 12, we have a, a sample size of 12, so for N equals 12, Let's figure out what the critical value is. So for n equals 12, oh, that's blurry. For n equals 12, the critical value is 0 0.928. That's not much better, is it? <laughs> 0 0.928. Okay. So for n equals 12, CV equals 0 0.928. Ooh. Okay, so our correlation statistic is not good enough, right? We would say since uh, 0 0.89 is less than 0 0.928, uh, speed limits. are not normally distributed. Okay, they're not normally distributed. Okay, that should make some sense. I bet if you looked at a histogram of this data, it would not be bell-shaped. You'd probably have, it would probably be bimodal, you know? You'd have a, a kind of like a clump here and, an, and another clump further up. In fact, let's just do it real quick. I'm going to take you back to StatCrunch for a second. Uh, let's make a histogram out of this stuff. 
just to see. So I'm going to go to graph, histogram. I want to make a histogram of the speed limits. Uh, let's start at, I mean, the smallest one is 25. So let's start at 25 and do class widths of 5. <laughs> you see, that's not bell-shaped at all. Uh, I suppose we could do larger class widths or something, class widths of 10. Uh, but that's also kind of bad. Anyway, I, I don't think we're going to get a very good looking picture here because there's so much space between these values. But, uh, but yeah, that's the idea. So, um, yeah, so this is not normally distributed. Okay. Uh, anyway, just three problems on your homework here, right? Number seven, nine, and 11. So that, uh, that shouldn't be too much of a challenge to finish. And that does it for 7.3. Uh, and that'll do it for our first week of online lectures.